And now, Tim Dillon is going to hell! Welcome to Tim Dillon is going to hell, everybody. We are here uh, in beautiful Los Angeles, California. It is a sunset podcast. How about that? If you're watching this, we don't know if we're putting it out video wise, but if if we put it out and you are watching it, it's a sunset podcast right here looking over the beautiful hills, not of Hollywood. We can't afford that, <laughs> but of an undisclosed location we won't share with you because many of you might get cute and come see us. Especially if I say something you don't like. I'm here with Benjamin Avery. Ben Avery is the producer of pretty much everything I do. All of those videos. He's the co-creator of all of those videos that you love. He edits them. He's very funny. He produces this podcast. And he is trans. <laughs> and it is that is the most important thing to me. That is why I hired him. Because he is trans. His other skills were completely a surprise. His ability to help me in this business... Uh, and to create really cool stuff was, again, secondary, tertiary. To be honest, I hired him because he was trans and because he was brave, and I wanted to be around somebody who was trans. I didn't know that he could edit videos. I didn't know that he could do anything like that. That is an added bonus for me, personally. So thank you. I was going to say, sir, but thank you, <laughs> person. I like... Uh, Great to be here in uh, Los Angeles, California. Um, we had a lot of fun. Thanks to, and I forget the guy's name, thanks to the guy who made that masterclass clip, which I posted on YouTube. If you listened to the last podcast, I spent uh, a fair amount of time illuminating uh, the uh, grift that is masterclass, this scam where essentially they get people that you love and respect and admire, they get geniuses to come and con you in your own home through YouTube. It's like the final insult, you know? It's like these people that you love and that you've watched their movies and you've watched their comedy, they hand them boatloads of money to set up a class where they tell you all of the wisdom that they have learned in their career, and you, I guess, through osmosis, Take that wisdom in and do with it who knows what. We don't know. That's the point. Nobody's really gone that far yet. Do you become David Lynch? I don't know. Maybe you're just interested in filmmaking. And instead of buying a book, you go to a master class. I would be totally cool with this if it was people that were just interested in topics. I don't think that's what it is. I think there's a lot of people out there, like my mother, who's a schizophrenic, when... when I would watch her at night after midnight, QVC, the home shopping network, that, that whole, they take the gloves off when it comes to marketing after midnight. They know, they know who they're marketing to. After 12 a.m., QVC just starts throwing shit out at people. They come out and they're like, this is uh, Jacqueline Kennedy's engagement. We're like, crazy shit that isn't true and my mother would sit in her chair with her phone out and scribbling into a notebook writing down the numbers of all of these things and then calling up and spending just charging she didn't have any money she was charging on qvc so i think a lot of those people will be purchasing master class i think that's the demo i don't think the demo is rational people that want to appreciate another art form i think the demo is people that tweet at Marvel. They're like, let me direct the next one. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen people tweet at Marvel. Hey, <laughs> let me get in there. Let me get in there and direct the next movie in your billion-dollar franchise. These are people that live amongst you. Some of them aren't trolls. It's easy to think everyone's a troll. Mm -hmm. They're not. There's some genuine lunatics walking the earth. There's this guy on Facebook I know. I'm not going to say his name. But he's clearly unwell, and he would tweet at Marvel, like, put me in the game, listen, he would tweet a very serious thing, and you're like, and then you look at the rest of his stuff, you're like, oh, it's obvious he's not a troll, and, you know, but Masterclass, so I was shitting on Masterclass, even though a lot of people that I respect are doing it, and I would also do it. This is what I don't ever want you people 
to not get about me and about what I preach. If Masterclass came to me with $400, okay? Now, they went to all these other people with a lot of money. But if they came to me with like 400 a month, just a few pokeballs, essentially, <laughs> and I had to come and hit you people over the head, I would absolutely do it. You would see me <laughs> smiling, and I'd go, well, the thing about comedy and podcasting is it takes a lot of time. I don't need a lot of money. to. They could convince me so easily. They could just pull me in a room and go, listen, fuck these people. That's all they'd have to say. And I'd go, you're right. You're right. What am I? Yeah. They go, what are you, a fucking schoolboy? Get in there. Teach a master class. I don't give a fuck. You people, really, the majority of you don't deserve a government. <laughs> you don't. You don't deserve an entertainment industry. <laughs> you don't. So the idea that you you don't deserve to be dealt with honestly. Mm -hmm. You deserve master class. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get. So if they came to me, I would feel shitty about it for a half a second. And then they'd write a check and I would fucking dance my fat <laughs> ass in that fucking YouTube room. And I would spout whatever garbage. I would say, join the platinum tier. Be an Excelsior member of the master class. Do you want the real good wisdom? And so just know that. Know that. I'm I'm not I'm not a saint here, which you know. But a guy on Instagram made a really cool parody of the master class and he pulled things from the podcast that I've said. And uh it was a lot of fun. And and I, I talked on the last podcast a little bit about the Melianopolis thing at the Creek, and I listened to some of the episode, and it's funny. He's pretty funny. He's ridiculous. He's he's a crazy guy. That's his thing. Um, what I then did on the plane to L.A. is I listened to the podcast he did with Jordan Peterson, and him and Jordan Peterson, and at points it was somewhat contentious because I think Jordan Peterson had said something about him that Milo – didn't really like. They didn't really get into that. But Peterson then subsequently apologized to Milo about it. This was when Milo was essentially taken out. If you don't know who Milo is, Milo, Milo, who cares? He was a provocateur. He was a, a tech writer from Breitbart, which was Steve Bannon's uh, you know, media company, which is backed by Robert Rebecca Mercer. They're a father-daughter team. Robert Mercer is a billionaire. He lives in Long Island, New York, where I'm from. Him and his daughter... Um, are conservative and they back Breitbart financially. They pull the strings. They're the money guys behind Breitbart in the same way that I think, you know, the Koch family is is behind like Shapiro and the Daily Wire and uh, Turning Point and all that stuff. Behind all of these things, just away on the left, Soros is behind. Behind all of these outfits is money. It's big money. And, and people with an agenda and they have an interest in certain viewpoints being pushed forward. And then they want certain charismatic people doing that. Um, so the Breitbart faction had Milo Yiannopoulos. He was like their star. And he was going around as this gay guy who was married to a black guy who was a conservative. He, he became big from Gamergate, which was this pushback against a PC wing of the gaming community that wanted more women in games. I don't even know that I'm under. I think I'm approximating this. To a point where, even if I'm getting a few details wrong, it's generally what happened. And so you had Yiannopoulos basically going online and, and pushing back uh, against the uh, uh, you know this, this, the 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 people that wanted more representation in video games. It became known as Gamergate. Uh, and then he went out and 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 he got popular. He was funny. He was aggressive. He didn't care. He was a troll. He was a master troll. He uh, eventually, you know, ended up going on a college tour in America. You know, there would be all kinds of protests when he showed up. The famous one was at Berkeley. When he went to Berkeley, you had a riot where I think there was over $100,000 worth of damage done to Berkeley. And then eventually he ended up getting deplatformed, kicked off Twitter because a lot of his fans, he was supposedly organizing his fans to go after Leslie Jones. I don't know if this is true or not. I don't care. I'm going to make a bigger point. That's It's neither here nor there. Um, I'm not a guy for deplatforming people. And, and anybody who listens knows that. And that's why I didn't care that Legion had him on or whatever. And I really don't care who has a platform. I think everybody has a platform. And if your arguments and ideas are better, it's your job to make them better. Um, and, if, and, and, and the other thing is that 
a guy like Milo Yiannopoulos is relatively easy to defuse if you're a smart person and you can argue. And by the way, so sh- Donald Trump should have been too. <laughs> I mean, he also should have been relatively easy to beat, to be honest. But he wasn't he, for a lot of reasons. But this shouldn't have been what it was. Like It shouldn't have been this unbeatable guy that nobody could handle. Literally towards the end, they just started asking him, what are your policies? What do you want to do? And he had no answers. And that was kind of the way to beat him. But you kept fighting with him. You kept playing his game, and then he won. So Yiannopoulos gets deplatformed off Twitter. He's, you know, they kick him off Patreon. He's kicked off, I think, Facebook. I think he's pretty much, I don't know if it's quite as bad as Gavin McGinnis, where it was like he was unpersoned. They remove you from all social media immediately, instantaneously. You lose all your followers, fans, your ability to make a living, whatever. So Milo, um, Milo, whatever, I keep going back and forth on, on what that is. He made a comment uh, years ago in a publication where he said, in, in the gay world, there is mentorship that happens. And that he was molested by a priest at 15 years old, and he does not view it as a negative thing. And in gay relationships, that is more commonplace than you would imagine. This is what he said. He said some version of that. And then he backtracked a little bit, and he said he was sloppy, and he didn't make the point the right way. And I understand what he was saying. First of all, there's never a relation to have, there's never an excuse or an argument to ever have sex with somebody who's underage in any sexuality. That's not, that's not, I think that's not what he was saying. I think what he was saying is that he personally, as a victim, it didn't ruin his life. It didn't derail him in a meaningful way. And that he viewed it, I think, he said there are certain types of relationships uh, in the gay community where a younger guy is being shown the ropes by an older guy because the younger guy can't really go to his parents because his parents are straight and heterosexual. So the older guy will like be like, here are the gay clubs. Here's this. Here's that. Which is all fine and good, but this does you, not at 15. That's not what happens. <laughs> But I don't think Mila was saying that it should happen. I think he was saying, hey, I was fucked at 15 or molested at 15 or whatever. So the right goes and gets him. The right digs up that article, the Reagan Battalion, who are the people on the right, and they get Milo. They, 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 and now it comes out. People are saying, oh, he's pro-pedophilia. Nobody cares about the details, but that's the society that we live in. The comment was an unfortunate comment. He, he didn't talk about it the right way. And him and Peterson get into it. It's actually a good podcast. But so he's gone. Then he's gone and he spends two years essentially in obscurity. He's over. The college tour is over. He's, he's Simon & Schuster. Whoever was publishing his book, I'm pretty sure it was Simon & Schuster. They pull out. He's done. He's unable to continue making a living. He's deplatformed off social media. He essentially goes away. And now he's starting to come back. And he's on Jordan Peterson and he's angry. And he said he's going to come back now as a comedian. He's going to come back. He's given up on politics for the most part because he doesn't think the right and the conservatives had his back. But, you know, he said, I'm a once in a generation star. I'm once in a lifetime star. I'm going to come back. I'm going to be much more in the realm of a regular entertainer, somebody like a Johnny Carson. He goes, the right has nobody funny, nobody that can crack a joke. Um, And I, I filled that whole and I and I need to again but I don't care about politics anymore I'm just going to be I'm just going to be somebody who has his own late night show or whatever and what you what you get from the interview is number one he's hurt he's angry um, he lost everything in one fell swoop but what you also get from the interview is that this is a guy who at his baseline wanted to be famous This is what he wanted to do. This is not somebody who was a political thinker. He didn't care uh, particularly about politics. He accidentally got into it. He was a tech writer. And then once he started creating a lot of controversy, he said, I can ride this wave to fame and to fortune. And the people behind him, and this is why I really want to make this point, the people behind him facilitated that rise. When you see people in the, in the public sphere and they all of a sudden are everywhere, seemingly overnight, it doesn't always happen by accident. It can. It can happen by accident. 
But in many cases, in most cases, and certainly when you look at politicians, you look at people like Milo Yiannopoulos, people like Candace Owens, people like Charlie Kirk. And if you don't know who Candace is, she's the, you know, the black conservative who's been on Rogan. And, you know, Charlie Kirk is the guy that runs Turning Point. He's like a younger kid. These people are cast in these roles by billionaire families like the Mercers, like the Cokes. The same way that a lot of the Parkland kids were cast in those roles by interests on the left wing. How many kids graduated from Parkland? We know what, eight of them? Yeah. Who are the rest of them? Where are they? And by the way, I always wonder if a school shooting happened in Long Island. Some of these kids are pretty fucking eloquent. Mm -hmm. They're pretty smart. They're pretty presentable. They're hip. Emma Gonzalez is bisexual. Latinx. David Hawk. I mean, you know, if you, if you shot up my Long Island school and these fucking billionaire families were going around trying to find spokesmen, God help you. God fucking help you if you stumbled upon me or my fucking friend. Yo, the, the shooting was wrong, but like sometimes people need to get fucked up. But I, I get it. Like shooting people in the face is not good. Shoot them in the leg. Like there's, there would be no, there would be not a soul that I went to school with who would rise to that occasion. It would just be Long Island. They would have to sift through Long Island trash for an hour of just like, okay, let's bring in Let's bring in Tracy. Tracy, how do you feel about what happened? Yo, I was like really scared, but the reality of the situation is this. I don't really give a fuck because I'm focusing on myself <laughs> and I'm focusing on, I really want to do cosmetics. This is something I've always believed in. And the reality is my, my mother is like, you should stop drinking and you should raise your daughter. And I tell her, I'm like, I can do both. <laughs> so what... I need to do is I don't really care about the, the fucking shootings and shit. I don't think you should ban guns. I think maybe I should have a gun, <laughs> quite frankly. Folks, I've, I've told you before about Blue Chew, and it's really something that I think you need to do. Sex is very important, not seemingly to the younger generation of people who've just decided it's kind of a waste of time and that procreation is a tool of the patriarchy used to uh, oppress people. And uh, time is much better spent wielding power through a nameless, faceless online mob. But that being said, there are some people that certainly enjoy getting a little nooky. Um, but you got to have uh, everything working. Everything's got to be in proper order. This is why you go to BlueChew.com, okay? BlueChew.com is great. BlueChew is a the first chewable, okay? So you can feel like uh, it's like a Flintstones chewable. You feel like a kid. Um, and it could even, it could even be fun. It's like your mom could, could be like, listen, you know, you know, Dan won't take his Viagra, but he loves his blue chew. And then you're just sitting in a high chair at 33 years old and she's feeding you a blue chew and you're chewing it. And then some, you know, fat skank comes over that you met and you guys can just go fool around in the basement, which is your room. Um, but it's great. You know, it has the same uh, active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis in a chewable form. Okay, you don't have to go to the doctor. There's nothing like that. No embarrassing doctor visits and awkward explaining to the doctor why your dick doesn't work. It's shipped right to your home in discreet packaging. Okay, Blue Chew has medical professionals that uh, can easily diagnose and prescribe uh, right over their own website. It's pretty amazing. Uh, you got to go to BlueChew.com, B-L-U-E. C H E W blue chew dot com promo code T. Let me see what the fucking promo code is here because you guys should use it. It is promo code T D. How easy is that? Promo code T D blue chew dot com. Okay. And again, this is this is everything's going to be great. You're going to have a, a big hard dick. You're going to meet a lovely woman or man or whatever you want to meet. And then you're going to sit down. Uh, you can own a home. You're gonna have a retirement account. You're gonna go on vacation. You know, you're not gonna live in this gig economy hell that everybody else is driving Lyft and Uber between their 15 jobs while they make no money and stop only at uh, red lights to uh, opine on a controversy that doesn't affect them, or you know, potentially upload a picture to social media that make it seems like they're not living in a uh, hellscape, even though they are, and every minute of the day is spent trying not to relapse on drugs or trying to save enough uh, money so that they can just buy a one-way ticket to a third world country and join a rebel militia, okay? You're not going to be one of those people. Uh, what you will probably be is a uh, very successful, happy, uh, well-liked, well-hung. You'll just wake up and have a big dick. 
uh, human being. So B L U C H E W bluechew.com promo code TD. But so the, the so the, the, the partly kids, the, the, the ones that we've seen are remarkably composed. They're, they're intelligent. And, and by the way, the people that are casting these roles want these roles. I'm not saying they don't want them. They are auditioning to an extent. I'm sure Candace Owens, Charlie Cook, Mule up. They wanted these roles, fame, fortune, money, power, people. When you go to an audition, when most people go to an audition, there's hundreds of people, thousands of people. I mean, when I go, it's four fat comics. We see each other every fucking time and they don't, they give it to someone else anyway. It's the same four fat idiots sitting there going, yep, we'd go in again. And then we say one, we say two words. They go, Slate, Tim Dillon, 6-1, please read the line. Armed robbery, next. They're like, can you say it again? Um... Don't laugh into the mic. People hate your laugh. I don't know why. I mean, not everyone. Only one guy. Okay. One guy complained about your laugh, but you can laugh. Just try to laugh, you know. But this is, this is, these auditions, I don't think it's a bad laugh. I don't know why everyone's so mad at it. Fuck you. Fuck you, one guy. <laughs> one guy was like, I want to kill that kid because of his laugh. But auditions are filled with hundreds of thousands of people. They all want these fucking jobs. And Mila Yiannopoulos wanted the job somewhere along the line. The reality is there are these different power factions and people, you know, Melianopolis, he thought he was like, I was speaking at CPAC. I was going to be the standard bearer of this party, of the Republican Party, this gay provocateur who's married to a black guy who's out of his mind, who's being deplatformed. He's all over the place. And basically, the National Review crowd in the Republican Party, they were more straight laced. They were the people that didn't want Trump. They got Milo out of there and they deplatformed him. But this is what you're serving. It's like, you know, when you have a certain job in uh, the, the administration of the presidency, they say you serve at the pleasure of the president. When you were a guy like Milo Yiannopoulos, you're serving at the pleasure of the Mercers. You're serving at the pleasure of a billionaire family. I know how hard it is to create a grassroots fan base. It's not easy. And when you're able to build one very quickly and you get a lot of media attention and you have a lot of infrastructure, and you have a lot of financial support, you're flying around the world and all that shit. None of that is cheap. And these people are funded. There's big money behind all of these people. And if they slip up, or if somebody in, in an organization that's backing them goes, I don't think they're the right person to get this message out. We're going to get rid of them. And then they throw them overboard. And Mila Yiannopoulos, he sounded a bit naive in the interview with Peterson. He sounded a bit like, he, he seemed to be... Like he was, it's like, you know, new to the party a little bit. It's like, well, you didn't think that this could happen. How was he trying to defend himself? How was he? Because that was like a, also, wasn't that like a three-year-old interview? Yeah. Four, year old, four years old, they dug it up. Yeah. Well, what he was saying is that conservatives are pussies mm -hmm. and they didn't have his back. And he was saying that now they're going to get taken out the same way they took him out. It's kind of, listen, it's not completely untrue that they ha there is now a way to take people out. You go and find something they said, um, and they're trying, they've tried to take Peterson out a bunch. It hasn't stuck. It hasn't worked. But I do think they're, they're move, they're, they will move Peterson to the center a little bit. They're moving mm -hmm. him a little more mainstream. That'll happen, and they'll do it just by, you know, opening up, avenues to him that were previously closed and when those avenues open up you you then have to kind of temper your language and what you're saying and you try because you have this avenues you know that that open up whether it's mainstream publications or mainstream media um academia whatever it is that you know Peterson is a different animal than me, than Milo. It's just a different situation. You know, Milo was really a troll and a provocateur, mm -hmm. but they've tried to take Peterson out. And this is, and listen, they'll try to take Shapiro out. They'll, they, they will try. Everybody will try. What I don't think people understand in this country is that a lot of what you're watching is theater. This is theater. This is to keep you guys entertained. And the money people behind this are just doing whatever they're going to fucking do. Either way, either way, they're doing whatever they're going to do. Mom and dad, who are those big billionaire families, 
they're doing whatever the bedtimes, whatever time it is. You can negotiate to you, you know, maybe you stay out a little longer. Whatever it is, they, they don't care. You're not really moving them off their course dramatically, meaningfully. And if you do, they will come, the gnashing of teeth will be extreme. And this is like people like the Mercers, people like the Cokes, people like, you know, George Soros on the other side. They all have an idea of how the world should be run. And they don't go out to people and say, this is how it is. They recruit people. And they take applications and they cast people. This There's one kid from Parkland, the one right-wing kid from Parkland, Kyle Kashuv, who was out going, we need more guns. I mean, that guy, <laughs> God love him. That dude, he wasn't in the building that was shot into. He was in like another building. He's like, listen, we got to, I, I love that because you know, the NRA loves, they love, they're like, wait, you'll say what? You, you'll do what? You'll do what? Oh, really? Great. So he's out there saying, arm everybody. Give everybody an automatic weapon. That's his answer. Just throw those fucking, it's the Wild West. Kick open the saloon doors at your own risk, buddy. And so you have this kid now, but here's the thing. Kyle loves saying the N-word. He loved it. He said it on, uh, I don't know where he said it, but he said it on Snapchat. He said it. No, snaps disappear. What's the other? I don't know what it, but they got, or it was a game, it was gaming, Xbox Live. I think Xbox Live, he was letting it fly. He's letting it fly on Xbox Live. And in real life, in real life too, he'd just walk up to people. He would say the N word frequently. So they found that. They went and go, hey, hey. So what happens? I think Turning Point USA, I think he resigned. So again, he's out. Because you serve at the pleasure of the billionaires who back you. That is it. That is what you're out here doing. This is theater. This is to keep people entertained and to keep people thinking that there's real debate and discussion in this country. There really isn't. There's really not a lot of debate and discussion about what's going to happen in this country. I know you like to think there is. You're like, this is everybody's at each other's throats. Yeah, maybe in a fucking grocery store. But in Washington, D.C., they're pretty much on the same page. There's a few things that they like to argue about abortion in Alabama and in Georgia. There's a few real hot buttons. Should gay people adopt kids? There's a few things. But when it comes to foreign policy, economic policy, the rights of corporate America, they are pretty much Nancy Pelosi in her Georgetown townhouse or with her millionaire husband in San Fran where fucking Laura Loomer's climbing in her kitchen window. <laughs> I mean, by the way, how do you not like Laura Loomer a little bit? How do you not respect Laura Loomer a tiny bit? She's the chick who takes it too far. Mm -hmm. That She's the girl on your block that would hang out with the boys mm -hmm. and would kind of do anything, <laughs> if you know what I mean, to have friends. Like, you'd be like, eat this bullfrog. And she'd be like, okay, <laughs> should I put it in my pussy? And you're like, oh, my God. You'll, so you'll just put it in your pussy? She's like, yeah, I can hang out with you guys, right? So this bitch is climbing in Nancy Pelosi's fucking kitchen window because they threw her off Twitter. <laughs> and again, none of it, like, it's none of it really, Matt, like, and Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump have a lot more in common with each other, and they have a lot more in common with Stephen Colbert than people have in common with, uh, you know, my Uncle Larry, <laughs> for example. <laughs> Uncle Larry doesn't have a ton in common with Nancy Pelosi, Trump, Colbert, there's, there's, there's just not a lot in common, but this is the thing If people love to get involved. They get invested. There's YouTube shows that cover the beef of other YouTubers. Like it's, mm -hmm. and the, the internet is great because it really does allow people to really feel and listen, did it elect Trump? Yeah, there are certain, I'm not saying that there's absolutely no effect, but if you look at what Trump has done, he's done a lot of things, but there's a lot of things that just haven't changed and won't change. And still, and you, you see people that are like cognizant politically for the first time. They're they're all like, wait, wait a minute. But Trump said it was going to be a wall and Wall Street was going to be reined in and we're going to get a new health care plan. 
it, folks, it, this isn't what happens. You got to grow up a little bit. The people that are in those positions make it very, very difficult to make any real change. It's just the fucking way it is. So what we do, we focus on Candace Owens. Did Candace Owens say something about Hitler? What did Roseanne tweet? Oh, I can't believe Kyle Kashuv, the 17 year old. I had no idea who he was, but he said the N word. And these are the things you focus. You don't focus on what's truly happening behind the scenes because you don't know it's kept from you. It comes out in a book 10 years later. Or if you're really, really plugged in and you pay attention, you can, you can figure out some of what's happening. You know? Uh, like a, somebody that I, I, uh, I think it was the, the chick on Chapo, Amber said, it was like, you know, hardcore Marxist or whatever, but she goes, I love the Financial Times more than the New York Times. She goes, because I actually glean more information. It's a better publication. I learn more about what's going to happen in the world. The Financial Times is the world as it is. And the New York Times is that, you know, editorialized, rosy view of like, well, we think that the law. And the Financial Times is like, this is up. This is down. <laughs> We need a pipeline to the Caspian Sea. Energy prices are crashing. We might need to get a little cute in a certain area. We might need to go over. They're like, so there are ways to, to figure out this information, but it is, it is funny to me how much of it is theater. And, and I know that people get mad at me because they're like, well, what am I supposed to do? Not care about anything? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I don't, yes. No, I'm kidding. Listen. Care about what you can care about. I, I don't, people tell me all the time, they're like, what does it mean? So we shouldn't get health care? I'm like, no, we should have health care. <laughs> I, what? What are you even saying? I was at lunch the other day. Somebody started, they went in on me for no reason. I'm eating a pokeball. They go in on me. <laughs> so they shouldn't have health care. No, we should. We should. We should also not torture people in underground prisons. I'd prefer if we didn't. Uh, assassinate democratically elected leaders <laughs> in our own country and around the world. I would like us to stop poisoning people, murdering journalists. I would enjoy all of that. I would like if we stop sending paramilitary death squads into other countries so that they could make way for our corporations to go in there and pillage people, all of that and health care would be nice. It would be very positive for this country. But I'm telling you how things, like, it is what it is. The world is what it is. The things that I know, the people I've had on the fucking show, the discussions that we've had, the debate, like, the areas that we've gone into, you start to get a little coarsened by this. And you start talking about human trafficking. You start talking about what's going on. You get a little coarsened. And it's not that difficult to, like, imagine that, like, oh, maybe some of these senators and congressmen don't really care about giving us health care. Because they're being blackmailed. <laughs> because they're in the kitty porn and they're doing blow. So maybe they don't really give a shit. Maybe they don't care. I care. But here's the thing. People are like, what do you not care? I care. I had people on this show. I had gave them the platform. Gave them a platform. I had well-researched writers come on the show who had dedicated their lives to researching how corrupt and fucked our government was. And you know what people said? They said, we don't want to listen to this. We want something else. Give us something else. Give us a dope queen and the guy we fucked. Give us something else. Give us a pod save America. We, we, we're going elsewhere. This ain't fun for the young professionals going to their cubicles. They don't like that. They don't like that with their matcha latte. They don't really like hearing about senators boinking kids and getting paid off and <laughs> fucking slaying Kenneth. So I try and try. I bring people on. We did a lot. We did a live podcast. You know who showed up? Not a lot of people. We did one for True TV. We brought Russ Baker on. He was fucking all over the place. I think he was kind of drunk, but this is what happens when they cast you out of fucking polite society and you can't talk to anyone. You, you have a few. So he comes on and he's telling people about MK Ultra and the Boston Marathon bombing. And there's about a hundred young professionals in suits Staring at me, him and Ray Comp, like you have no idea. They were completely lost. They had no, they were like in their own head somewhere else. So when people say to me, Do I care? Yeah, I care. And we we we've actually tried in a little way, in our little shitty way, using this platform that we fucking had. We tried to get people to give. The pe people don't give a shit. 
They don't care. They want to be socialists. They want to be alt-right. They want to be a thing. And they want a game. And they want to be online with people that think like them. And they want to make memes. And they want to go get laid. And they go to the fucking Brooklyn Red Socialist Party event mixer. I'll go down there and suck a few communists off. What do I give a shit? But this is what they want to do. They don't give a shit. They really don't care. They want to get a Patreon going. They want money. They want fame. What they don't want is any real fucking... Air. These are not revolutionaries. They're not going to go burn down the best. It's not happening. The revolution isn't coming. Look at the fuckers who say it is. What is Antifa going to do? They're going to throw a rock at what? The White House? What, what, what are you nuts? With some fat-haired, green-haired, some fat, green-haired lesbians going to chuck a fucking... Chuck a nunchucks? At the White House? And well, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think? And who knows? You want those people to rule? They might be worse. But this is what I mean. I'm sick of wearing this mantle of I don't care. No, you don't care. You don't fucking care. You don't sit with Nick Bryant, this fucking guy who's telling you about torture and all this shit for hours. You bring him on the show. The guy's got white hair. He's telling you. You bring Mark Gagliotti on, does a whole book about the Russian mob and Trump and everything like that. You know, it's like, so the whole thing is, I remember stand-up had a great quote once. Stand-up was like, yeah, people say I don't care, but stand-up was like, yeah, it didn't matter when I cared. Remember when I cared? No one gave a shit. So to me, it's like, listen, do whatever you want. Go get healthcare. Go get everything. Get, get, get everything. Do whatever you want to do. I can't, I'm not going to say stuff that's going to get me in trouble here, but do what you want to do. Listen. I said, as a joke, this is a joke, and I'm a comedian, but I said, if you wanted to get the government's attention, this is a joke, and I'm a joker. Jokey, jokey, joke. But if you wanted to get the government's attention, you would strap a bomb to a two-year-old and send that toddler into a Grand Central. Every week, you would go to a different station, and the toddler would walk in, and this is funny. I did this on stage. It was kind of funny because I do a toddler walk, and it's very funny, but a lot of people don't laugh. But it's very funny to a few certain select people in the room that are really, they're really over life. So they think this shit's good. So I do the toddler walk and I go, and the toddler just, he's got a little bear attached to him, but it's a bomb and he just goes. Whoa. And then, and then people, listen, you're going to get some attention. People will, they'll be like, these, these fuckers are willing to send in toddlers to train stations at rush hour and blow them up. I'm not saying to do that. Like when me and Ray told a bunch of our fans to join ISIS and move to Syria. We did that, number one, because I think you should travel. I think you should leave. I've said people should go teach English in China. And I, I, I've said, if you feel strongly about something, I respect, I don't agree with ISIS. They've done horrible things to gay people or whatever. But it's hard for me to not respect if my friend Ryan, who's a, you know, a personal trainer and a DJ, if he were to join ISIS and be in Syria and I saw a photo with him in that Jeep Grand Cherokee with that Kalashnikov, I would be a little proud. <laughs> I'd be a little proud that he did it. So when me and Ray said, go out there and join out, we just said, listen, you're all chirping all day on Twitter. Go and, I, you know, but I'm, I'm sick of, I'm no longer going to take this shit. Like, I don't care. And I've never, you know, I know how fucked up it is. We tried to, we told people I fucked up. People don't give, people don't really like that. They want like the SNL level of like, it's kind of silly. That's what people want to think about the government, that it's like a little silly. It's, it's silly. They don't want to think it's a murderous death cult <laughs> that's imposing. Yeah. They just don't. They don't. They don't. I think, I like to think it is because to me, that's funnier than it being silly. If it was silly, it's kind of stupid. But when you when you understand what it is, you go, this is a murder. It's, 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 a, it's, it's kind of like life means nothing to these people. You start laughing. Folks, many of you are still out there in the world without a website. I don't know how you're doing it. It's crazy. But let me tell you right now, it's not going to work. I've told you that before. Especially if you want the boomers, if you want older fans, if you want that generation of people that have raped and pillaged, ruined the world, that are all about to retire and shit themselves and uh, retirement homes all over the eastern seaboard and really all over the country. If you want those people figuring out where you are and what you're doing, you have to have. A URL, got to have a website. This is the way it is. Those people, they love Facebook because it's a website. Social media, they don't really understand. They're not on Twitch. 
I'm not going to find them on uh, uh, whatever the other one is that I'm blanking on right now, TikTok. It's just not going to happen. So you need a website. Go to Tim Dillon's going to hell.com. T I M D I L L O N S going to hell.com. There is no is in this site. We built this site for the, for the podcast using Wix. Okay. You will see my live dates coming up. I'm at Mohegan Sun, June 20th to the 23rd. I'm at Hilarities in Cleveland, the 19th and the 20th of July. Um, go to the website, go all the way to the bottom of the website and click on the link and then upgrade, uh, or get it, get a Wix premium package or upgrade it. And you're going to save 10% if you take the link from my website. Um, I'll tell you this, Wix is great. Lots of people are using Wix. I think over a hundred million have probably over 150 million have started, um, websites with Wix, you could choose from over 500 templates. They have a drag and design uh, an ADI, which is an artificial design intelligence. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do really is sit back, answer a few questions about what you want your website to look like, then Wix will do the rest. So for those of you who are completely checked out and don't even want to do anything, want a business, want people to know who you are, but don't even want to contribute to your own website, don't worry. You can sit back and let an alien, artificial intelligence, design the entire website for you, okay? They got AI to do what you can't do. If you can't even contribute to your own website, if you're like, hey, listen, I want success, but what I don't want is to spend even three minutes choosing a template. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you're too busy to choose a template. Well, they have that for you. Isn't that great? Okay, again, Tim Dillon's D-I-L-L-O-N-S, no is here, going to hell.com. Also, if you're a listener of the show, you know that we have a promotion where if you do this, I will have you on the show. And we're going to do this episode next week to, to uh, what should we call it, to uh, promote your product, whatever it is, whatever you're using on the website, whether you're a band or whatever. Uh, Tim Dillon's going to hell.com. If you upgrade through my site, I will give you 90 seconds on the show, but you have to prove it to me with a direct message on Instagram showing that you've actually done it through my site. And then you can come on for 90 seconds and you could plug whatever nonsense you're doing and you'll get an audience of tens of thousands of people that may be interested. All right. That's when you take shrooms or anything and you realize you just start looking at these demons. Go to the, watch George H.W. Bush's funeral and watch the demons <laughs> climb onto the podium to eulogize him. They're 87. They've drank human blood their entire life. They have soft skin. The, the skin that comes from eating the pineal gland of children. <laughs> and they get up. Why do you think Comedy Central hasn't given me a show? <laughs> And I'm 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 asking, I'm asking literally because I don't, I don't know. I think I'm affable. So these guys climb up onto the thing and they're like, I remember, and they're barely alive, but they're just animated by the demonic forces, and they climb onto the thing and they're like, I remember when I first, and and everything about George H. W. Bush's life is a complete fiction, by the way, and everything about most of these fucking people's lives is a fiction, okay, and it's perpetuated by a media and whatever. So these fuckers get, and to me, the real story is funny. That's why, that's one of the reasons I like it. It's absurd. It's crazy. It's funny. And it makes a lot more sense. It makes a lot more sense. When you start realizing, you're like, why do these congressmen and senators never give a fuck about the people in their districts? And you go, oh, they're all compromised. Many of them are blackmailed. They're bought and sold. And then you start to understand how and why. Then it makes a lot more sense. When you understand these things, it, but when you see these demons eulogizing HW and they get out there and they're like, you know, I met George years ago. I met him. He was a man. and they and everyone in the in the room like they're all kind of swaying and they've got tears and the media is there too and they're all crying because they all loved them because they're fucking what they, they're all fucking it's the same thing they're all in the same crew it's the same camp and. Um, so to me, I've always, so when I heard Milo, like shocked, like I love these people that are shocked that you can be thrown away. Yeah. Yeah. You can be thrown away. You can be taken out. You can be thrown to the, you are not essential. 
You know what I mean? You're not essential to the operation. There's somebody else waiting in the wings, waiting to take your spot. Mm-hmm. So when, so when Yiannopoulos goes, well, I'm going to come back as a comedian and I'm going to host my own show on my own website, fine. Do whatever you want. But that's what you always were. You always were a comedian. You never were important politically. It didn't matter. It seemed like you were. You, 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 you helped maybe shift some people's opinions on, on certain things for a while. But make no mistake, this is theater. And you are a theatrical performer. You're not an essential part of how this system works. And it worked for a long time when you just had the major networks, all of this was much easier because these guys went to the same schools. They lived in the same communities. It's very easy to corral people. Now it's harder, but that's why you hold the auditions and you get in Charlie Kirk and Candy. So one of my, somebody I know like knows Charlie Kirk, and this is not somebody that I know well, like, people listen to this show, they still have no idea who I am. They, they have no idea who I am. I'm not like a woke social justice, yes, queen, para. <laughs> so they, they think I'm like a country club Reaganite or something. And they're like, I could maybe get Charlie Kirk on the show. I said, let me, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> I've had people on my show that have credibly accused the Bush family of the murder of President Kennedy, profiting from the drug trade, human trafficking, the overthrow of democratically elected government, murder, genocide, really. I will go into that. If Kirk comes on my show, we are talking Franklin scandal. I'm going to say, Charlie, what? So the bit, I'll give him one question. I'll be like, tell us about how low taxes help the business climate. He'll get so excited. And then I'll be like, all right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get down to business. I got a few testimonies you might want to hear, and I'll just pull the book out, page four. I'll have a copy for him. Mm-hmm. These people are clowns. They're clowns. They're saying whatever they have to say to make money. Don't fall for it. Don't be that stupid. They're just saying they're actors. They couldn't get into Hollywood because their teeth are fucked up. Acasio <laughs> Cortez, <laughs> teeth <laughs> fucked up. They're 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 in another. You know, th- there's a quote that says like politics is acting for. Ugly people, show business for ugly people. And it's what it is. They're saying whatever they have to say. They don't care. And Coulter, during, who is funny, but mentally unwell and funny, she, during Iraq war, was like, CIA's great, FBI's great. We got to go and invade their countries, kill their leaders, convert them to Christianity. That was the quote that got her fired from the National Review. Now, the FBI and CIA are horrible they're all infested with globalist shills that are trying to get rid of President Trump. We should build a wall and we, we don't belong in any of these fucking countries, Syria, whatever, who cares? If they're gassing their own people, let them do it. It's not our problem. She went 180 from all of her views. They don't care. These people don't care about anything. They don't have any values. Their value is relevance. That's all they give a shit about. Am I near the bestseller list? Am I on the top? Am I, am I on the shows? Am I on the right shows? Am I on the Sunday shows? Am I getting invited to the right cocktail party? They don't give a shit and they don't believe in anything. So don't fucking come at me when I'm trying to eat a Poke Bowl. Tell me that I don't give a shit. <laughs> you fucking psychopaths. <laughs> you nuts. I've done the deep dives. <laughs> when you, I don't give a shit because I'm not getting on stage. I don't have a, a half hour about socialized medicine. <laughs> the fuck you want me to write about? My mother's in a mental institution. It would be nice if that was nicer. <laughs> Put a couple of couches in there that are nice. I'd visit more. I have no problem with that. Stop acting like I'm corporate shill. I'm making no money. <laughs> People call me a corporate. They message me on Instagram. They're like, you're yeah, corporate shill. For what corporation? <laughs> Gas Digital Inc.? Does that even exist? <laughs> Every day I'm waiting for the FBI to come in and throw us in cuffs. <laughs> I mean, corporate shill. People are bananas out there. I just want to be an L.A. woman, a 50-year-old L.A. woman whose entire life people want to fuck her and then they want to fuck her. They don't really want to fuck her anymore. So she starts getting spiritual at 50 and she starts talking about the journey 
and she gets into meditation and health and wellness and wholeness and being whole because nobody wants to put anything in her hole anymore. And she didn't have to think about any of that before she was 50 because everyone everywhere wanted to fuck her. Every door magically opened. The sun, rainbows appeared over her head. But when she got 50 and a couple of, you know, the plastic surgery can hide a little, but it can't hide it all, can it? So then you have to get real deep and you have to take that journey, you know? How, how long have I done? I want to say a few more things, too. We're at 44. We're at 44. Yeah. That's perfect. So I got, a, I got a few more things to say to the, to the comedy community. Uh, there's a real theater kid energy in certain parts mm-hmm. of the comedy community right mm-hmm. now. And uh, I will say that there's a lot of unearned, what's the word, jubilance? Is that a word? Jubilant? People are very happy. This is my problem. I look at people sometimes, they're very happy. Well, they think they're doing something. Well, they're happy, things are going well, but a lot of this is, I was an actor, I wasn't in high school theater, okay? You talentless faggots. I was a real actor. I was on Sesame Street. And before you laugh at that, you fat chicks, you bunch of fat chicks trying to get attention for the first time in your goddamn life, understand that I got paid, not a lot, and not often, but I was paid. I was in real plays that real people wrote. And yes, some of them killed themselves afterwards. That's what playwrights do. They take themselves out. Okay? They don't go to JFL and dance around. They blow their brains out. <laughs> New York was a great city. I was in a show called Lake of Fire. No, I'm sorry. I was in that. But I was in another show called Christmas Dreamers Awaken. It was about a woman who was raped by her father repeatedly. And it was in the village when the village was cool. It had little black box theaters. And I was in this. I think I was eight or nine or something. I don't even know what I did. I just kind of sat there while the main character went on and just just hinted about her dad raping her. She never fully, but it was pretty. If you If you were intelligent, you knew what was going on. Her father came to the show and he sat there through the whole thing. And it was clear that the main character was his daughter and that he was the rapist. He molested everybody. And she said, what do you think afterwards? And he went, I thought it was good. It was a little long. (laughs) And that, and now that's been replaced in Manhattan by theater kids. Theater kids with PR departments behind them singing and everything. And, and this is why I feel about it. There's some real talent out there. Even people I disagree with on pretty much everything. There's some very talented people out there. But there's, there's a theater kid energy. And the theater kid energy is kind of like, we're the shit. Who cares? Doesn't matter. We're the new hot thing. We're great. We live in this bubble. We enjoy it. And it's all fine. What I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you this. There, there is. I don't care what is going on at the moment for anybody. There are so many talented people in New York City who you'll just never see, you'll never hear from, and they will die underappreciated, unappreciated, alone. Uh, and just, you know what? Think about them a little bit. Think about them a little bit when you're doing your interviews and you're asked meaningless questions by some other goon <laughs> whose job it is to, you know, and just realize that you're lucky that Joan Rivers said, some people out there are fucking very lucky. You're ve- you're, a, you're a whole lot of fine. You're a whole lot of fine. You didn't invent shit. It ain't great. It ain't a riot when you perform. Like people aren't stomping to get their money back, usually because no money was exchanged. <laughs> But just know that that's where it's at. Don't relax. Okay, I will say a quote that someone said that made me a little upset. They said, when people copy me, you know what I say? I say, thank you. But no one's copying you because you've done nothing. And I don't mean that in a dick way because this person I'm talking about, I think there's talent there. But you've done nothing. You've inspired no one. You've done nothing. Cut it out. Just just relax. Enjoy what's happening. Enjoy where you're at. And realize there's a, a, a cashier at CVS 
who is so much more talented than you'll ever be. And she's got three kids and a husband that beats her. (laughs) And you are in a position to be fine and have everyone love it. Just know that that's where it's at. Don't get crazy. Be happy. Listen, people could say the same thing about me. I am fine. There's guys that are funnier than me that'll never get certain opportunities I've gotten. And I try to think about that. I try to think about how fucked up life is. Not all the time because you got to, you know, you can't. I'm not saying. But certain people that go out there and there's just this real attitude that uh, they've been around for about five minutes and they act like they've changed the game. They've changed the game. And five minutes ago, they were poof. Nobody knew. Gone. Who? They didn't know. Nobody knew. But now they're here and they've revolutionized everything. They Gutenberg with the printing press. They came out and they gave people the idea that they could live. There's people out there that they now believe they can be like me and live. And it's such a it's such an honor to inspire people creative. Can you cut it out? Nobody, nobody is out there. It's a mirage. It's a black box. Nobody's at what some fat chick from Ohio's now going to move to New York. She was going to anyway. (laughs) She was coming anyway. Stop. Just be happy. I come from the world of theater, real theater. Not mommy and daddy paid money for camps and they paid money for publicists. Real fucking theater. Great people that are, are, are fucking tremendous. And none of them succeeded. Then they all end up fucking singing to old people in Long Island, half of them. This is what happens. You get cocky and you start talking like you're the shit. It's just to me, I, I just say to myself, ugh, it's not needed. It's not needed. It's not mature. It is what it is. I have a lot of respect. I see a lot of plays. I see a lot of shows. I watch a lot of people. You're not going to know who they are, but they're fucking great. They're great at what they fucking do. And it's just a little, it can be a little aggravating when out of nowhere, somebody pops up and they tend to think that they've pa- they're paving the way. They're paving the way for people. The way has been paved. None of us are paving the way here. It's been paved. Are you high? <laughs> Are you high? It, it, it's been paved. It's paved. People are coming down. It's, it's good. It's good. I'm happy. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like when we saw the ferryman, like in the front row, and there was the, 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 the what is it called when they come out and bow? That, that the uh, you know the uh, curtain call whatever yeah. I forget the uh, yeah yeah they come I mean, out yeah it's a three hour I play. in the theater I don't know what it's fucking called no I'm trying to think the the, the cast call the bow I get it. I've done it more than half these other people are gonna make fun of me I can't think right now because he fucking just yelled at the Bush family for an hour I'm scattered yeah but we saw the, the uh, yeah but I I'm like embarrassed to be seen by like I don't even want them to see my face well it's they like, should write yeah. an article about you that you're the boss now. You're the boss of the five families. They're going to write an article that you're the boss. And you go, I'm the boss now. I didn't shoot nobody. I didn't run a successful operation. No racketeering, no gambling, no murder, no women. You do nothing, but I'm the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, when, I, when, people, uh, when people emulate me, they copy me, I say, thank you. <laughs> ah, God. Ah, God. What are you doing? Have a little, have a little dignity. Mm-hmm. Injected into yourself mm-hmm. somehow. <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> that, that baby on stage. There was a there, baby, and, and you were like, "That baby's done more than either of us." The baby <laughs> on the ferryman is done more than me and Ben have done, and made more money, and is more essential to the production in every way. I, no one cares what I go to laugh bar if they come out before me and go. Today we're gonna have a magician who does magic with puppets. The audience would go nuts. They'd fall out of their seats. There'd be 25, 30 people, and more now, because more people are knowing who I am. Some of my fans would be a little upset until 
he came out and did a did a little bit with the puppet, and then a lot of them would go, "Well, this isn't bad, is it? We're already here." So, I'm just saying, I respect a lot of different people, a lot of different kinds of comedy, but I, I just I, there's so you know, I, I, sometimes people ask me to do articles, or they'll pitch an article to me. They're like, "How is it harder as a gay guy in comedy?" I'm like, "I'm not doing this article." They're like, "What's it like when a gay guy works comedy clubs?" I'm like. Oh, I don't know, like tons of gay guys have done throughout history. What are you talking about? Right. I mean, I remember one gay guy in New York was like, I was the first gay guy to work at a comedy club. I'm like, you know, that's provably untrue. That's completely wrong. You're saying that. I get it. I, I, don't, I don't hate on anybody. You get, you get press written about you. Great. Just come. Unless, here's the other thing. Unless you were kidding. Maybe you were kidding when you said that. And then if that was the case, I feel a little stupid. <laughs> now, if you were kidding, Might have been a joke, I guess. if you were kidding when you said that, it's kind of funny. And, well, <laughs> if... <laughs> I mean, yeah. if that was a joke, mm-hmm. then... The, the last quarter of the show was my joke. <laughs> then I was kidding. If you were kidding, then I was kidding. But I don't know if you were kidding. And the point is this. It's a larger point. It's not the one line. It's the larger thing. Mm-hmm. It was the line a lot. But it was a larger thing. How beautiful here. Isn't this nice? What are we at now? 55. 55. Folks, TimDillonComedy.com. We have really fun stuff coming up. We have a lot of cool shit happening. I'm going to be at Comics at Mohegan Sun, July 20th through the 22nd. July 23rd, I'll be at Skankfest. I'll be doing some club spots in New York the last week of June. Uh, I said June, right? June. Did I say July? June 20th through the 22nd, Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Ticket link in the profile page of my Instagram. July 19th and 20th, Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio. One of my favorite clubs. I absolutely love it. August 1st through the 3rd, American Comedy Company in San Diego. A lot of dates down south in August, including Charlotte, North Carolina, Nashville. Going to be down there at Zanies. Uh, Comedy Zone in Charlotte, Nashville, Zanies, the Stardome, and I think Huntsville, Alabama, or Hoover, Alabama. And, and somewhere else in, in Hoover, Alabama. All of those dates are on the website. You can get tickets to all of that stuff. Tim J. Dillon, D-I-L-L-O-N, on Instagram and Twitter. We update stuff in the moment if I'm doing shit around L.A. or if I'm doing stuff in New York. Um, what is your information? Uh, at Ben Avery is good on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, BenjaminAvery.net, my website. Ben is out there producing, editing, doing all kinds of mm-hmm. shit. If you need him, if you need work, not work, if you need work, if you have work for him, hit him up, email him. Maybe he's too busy. Maybe he'll be able to do that. Don't email him if you're a clown. Email him if you're a serious person. Fucking send some troll email unless it's funny. If it's funny, he won't care. But I'm, I'm don't really. Don't jam up the inbox, but whatever. <laughs> We are going to do the episode. I know that I, a lot of people are like, was that a scam with Wix? Are you really going to? No, it's not a scam. I told you something, and I'm going to follow through on my promise. If you if you did what, what I said you had to do, which was go to my website, click on the link at the bottom, uh, which was Tim Dillon's, D-I-L-L-O-N-S, going to hell.com. There's no is. It's just Tim Dillon's with an S, going to hell.com. It's the Wix site that we built for the show. It has some of my live dates on it, some media on it. If you went to the bottom, clicked on the link, got 10% off, a premium plan with Wix, and then messaged me that or showed me that you're coming on the show for 90 seconds. You have three minutes to pitch whatever project you want. You're in front of tens of thousands of people. You'll pitch whatever project you want. I may ask you questions about it, or I may be so disgusted and horrified we hang up on you. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm sure. I don't think we're hanging up. We're going to ask you. You're going to get more than 90, but 90 is a lot. You're going to get 90 to pitch. 90 is a good pitch. It's too long. It, it's really too long for most of you. <laughs> most of you got 60 seconds yeah. in you at best. I will say a lot of people that did it 
didn't yeah. use the promo code. So if you if you can't even do that, I mean, listen, I here's the reality. I'm just putting you on anyway. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know if my ad department knows how the promo code works. Listen, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to put you on if you sent me a screenshot that you did something. You're going to be on the show. I, I, I don't have the fucking time to advertise who's lying or not to advertise, to do an investigation and pu- pull it up and see who's fucking around and who just took a picture of Wix or whatever. I, listen, we get to you. We get to you. We're going to do that episode. It's coming up soon. I would imagine we're going to record it next week. I'm going to put it up on my Instagram story or on Twitter. And then after we've done the episode two weeks later, somebody's going to message me and go, remember, uh, here's the wit. Well, pay attention, fuckers. Pay attention. We're doing it once and only once. You guys are going to, I swear to God, at 45 seconds, you're, you're going to have nothing. I swear to God, you're going to have fucking nothing. And it's 90 seconds to pitch. Pitch what you're doing. You think that was a joke? If you copied me, you know what I say? Thank you. Wait, what? You think that was a joke? You didn't read the article. What, what are you talking about? The thing that I just ranted about for 17 minutes. And now if I don't know if it's serious or not. Oh, the, the gay thing? No. The, what gay <laughs> Wait, what thing? Are you talking about? What gay thing did I even talk about? About the, the comic in the article who said. Uh, it's nothing to do with gay. So, what does that have anything to do with gay? What are you gay? talking about? I don't know. The thing. I, I, I have no idea. The thing when the, 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 the comic goes, when people copy me, you know what? I say thank oh, you. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you were talking about the gay comment. Um, I don't know. I, you have to tell me who said that off mic, and I could have some more content. I don't. I I think it was serious. I'm just saying. It, it sounds it. like I've I've heard comics say crazier things than that. And this is a talented person, but it, it relax. It's just crazy. It's wild. Comics that say I've changed comedy. I've, I've said like, stuff, not stuff like that, but I've said stupid stuff where I've just tried to be funny, and it came off weird, and people are like, "What well, you, dude?" So, you know, I respect everybody. And, and if you listen to this show, you know nothing could be further from the truth than what I just said. When I just said that, when that came out of my mouth, I, I just said I respect everybody. Nothing. N- I've never been anything less than that. Yeah. Do you see how easily I just said it? Mm-hmm. I respect everyone. Everyone's great. No, I don't mean a word of that. I don't mean a pause. I don't mean any of that. There's not one word of that that I mean. But... We are where we are. Yeah, a comic asked you last night, how do you post on Instagram with like such confidence? Yeah. And how do you post the stories? And you said, you said, because uh, I look at these people like animals. I have contempt for ev- all the people. So we just do what we do. And if you like it, you like it. That's it. Except you. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> Who's ever listening to this? You, you are not who I'm talking about. Everyone else, them. You are a gift from God. You're designed by Jesus Christ. You're the only fan I want and the only one I need. Everyone else is a flaming pile of dog shit (laughs) who I want to see dismembered on television. I don't have television, but on a streaming service or social media or something that's fucking relevant. TimDillaComedy.com. Goodbye.